Today, uh, we're doing another chair. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a chair. I did it pink, ombre, it was gorgeous. I had a lot of requests to show how to do that. So um, I even had quite a few asking if I would do a workshop on it. So instead, for now, I've decided just to do this video and then we'll go from there. So to begin with, I'm just going to prep it while waiting for you all to jump on. So prepping, super simple. I'm giving it a really good sand all over with an 80 grit um, sanding block. Really simple. And then we'll get into the painting. So I was planning to have this done before I started this morning, but my morning's been a little bit more chaotic than normal. So really, really simple. And this is scruff sanding. So it's literally just 10 minutes, five minutes, all over your piece with a nice rough grit sandpaper. And it's just scratching up that surface. On chairs, I focus on the seat, the back, anywhere that your body's going to wear against quite a lot. Um, and the fronts of the legs where people put their feet on them all the time. So anywhere where it's going to wear a lot, you want to make sure that your paint's really, really sticking to try and help give it the longevity that it needs. So these are really featured chairs. I'm only doing like them as one-offs. I only had two of them. I've done one already. It's gone. It's sold. This is the second one. So I'm just doing it as well. Here I have a bucket of hot soapy water, as hot as I can get it out of my tap, which is pretty hot. Um, hot soapy water and a cloth. And just because I'm in the studio, I'm just gonna give it a wipe down and clear off some of this dust. It's pretty dusty in here, but I don't wanna make it worse. And I always give every piece a really good clean and a really good scrub. Make sure all that dirt and the dust and the grime and the old cleaning products are off it. You don't want them to be on your piece because they are all going to impact or they could all potentially impact on your painted finish, which is not what we want. After all the effort that you've gone to, you don't want to um, end up with a... Um, piece where the paint's just coming off. So you can also wet your sanding sponges. I've also got a um, Purico one here. This one's just one that I've had for ages. You can wet them as well, which can reduce the dust, but you're still sanding. For, they still scrub really, really well. So just all over. Chairs can be a pain trying to get into all around the legs and that. I don't do chairs very often because of how annoying they can be to do. In fact, I've only ever done like five or six. Oh no, actually I've done more because I did a custom job that was a big dining table with like eight chairs. Um, so I've done under 20 chairs, let's say that instead. <laughs> but yeah, chairs are not my favourite cup of tea, but I do do them. They definitely, I love a good feature chair, so I don't mind doing them occasionally. How is everyone today? There's a few of you on, say hello. All right, I think we are there. Okay, so let's give it all a wipe down, make sure we're all nice and clean. And then I'll give it a quick dry and we can get painting. So, for those who don't know who I am, my name is Lise. I'm the owner and the artist behind the Painted Brush and Co. Uh, we are in Bendigo, Victoria, 37 High Street, Eagle Hawk. We have the studio here that's open five days a week. And then um, we're also online at thepaintedbrush.com.au. And we are currently having our birthday sale as well. So, everything that I'm using here today is up on our website or in store. 
and our birthday sale is 20% off site-wide and in store it's all furniture finishing products so all the products that you can see behind us here they're all on sale so it's a great opportunity to stock up if you're just starting out um, I love seeing beginners take advantage of sales it can be really daunting when you're just starting um, and it can be I think it's quite daunting as well because at times depending on what you're purchasing it can be quite expensive as well so Sales are always a great way to take advantage. Just let me grab my other tea towel. I'm dropped. I'm just going to give it all a wipe down just to dry it. And put my apron on. Let me. I can see your comment. Let me have a look in a second when I'm closer to the camera. It's quite warm in here. It rained really heavily overnight here last night, so it's very humid. And the studio gets quite hot in the afternoon. Why don't you tube landscape? Much easier to see what you're doing. Um, Facebook does not allow landscape lives. They only allow portrait. My YouTube videos are all landscaped. Um, most of the time, I do upload all my lives to my YouTube channel as well. However, um, whenever I can, I do zoom them in and crop them so that you are seeing it in a landscape. But it's not always possible. Something like this, the size of it, I'm not going to be able to crop the screen. Um, so yeah, it's Facebook settings. It's not something that I can change. It's just how it is, but I will move the camera closer in a second as well so that you can see what I'm doing. So I hope that answers your question. I wish that we could change it to landscape. It would certainly make my life a lot easier, but more and more platforms are also moving to portrait. Um, Instagram prefers portrait um, that you can do landscape on it, but portrait certainly shows up better. Um, and then TikTok as well, which I also use, also likes portrait you can't do landscape at all on this so it's yeah there's these platforms there's not much we can do unfortunately okay so this is our chair just a pine chair we've given it a good scruff sand all over you could go in and prime this if you wanted to I'm not going to um, I know that I've done enough scruff sanding uh, and I've already done one of these and I know that it was absolutely fine with just the scruff sanding, so I'm not going to prime it today. Instead, we're going to come in with our paint. So, I have this big tub full of Pure Eco sample pots, which I use to paint all of my, actually I can show you, to paint out our colour chart as paint sample sticks in chalk finish and I'm working on maybe doing them in silk finish as well but I've got this big pot and the chalk finish doesn't last that long in the little pot so I thought let's use up some of these and create a finish so Facebook hid my post this morning so I don't have any ref any suggestions from you all but I'm thinking blues an ombre blue are uh, blended together so let me find the colour that I'm looking for. I'm thinking denim, and I'll show you the samples on our other boards. Mm, maybe Lagoon. Actually, what about Lagoon and Peacock? No, I don't like that. Colonial, Lagoon, and not you. I want a white as well. I like to sort. So we're going to go dark to light. And I like to have a white involved. Yeah, you'll work. Uh, yeah, all right, we're going to do that. So, the colours I have chosen this morning, who knows, we may still pick some more. We're going to do uh, Colonial and Lagoon. So, I'll show you the two colours on our boards. There's Colonial. And... That would be my lagoon. So these are the two colours that we're choosing. Oh, and fossil as well, which is a white. Oh, that's not showing great. So we've got colonial and lagoon. So a dark, a light, and then I use a white as well to mix it all 
um, in, and we might even pull in. We're going, no, I don't want that one. I want the other one. We're going to pull in some Capri as well, I think. I like to add a little bit of brightness as well sometimes. Sometimes pieces need it. The pink one that I did, I actually added a fluoro orange. Um, and it just really, really lifted it. So we're going to do some Capri as well, which is this really bright blue. Absolutely gorgeous. We might bring in that, but I don't think so. So I start, it's up to you with chairs. I generally find it easier to start from the bottom and work my way up. So to do that, we flip it upside down. Upside down, let me shove my table into view. There we go, oops, my other table. How's that? Still no view. There we go, we're getting there. Okay, and I'll grab my, I'm not quite organized, I tried to be, but I wasn't. And, and a spray bottle as well. So these are our five mister bottles. They're continuous. They're fantastic for blending. So I'm going to start with my curl. No, I'm not because it's dried up. <laughs> that worked well, didn't it? it? Teaches me for not picking my colours first. Okay, so we're going to start with not you because you're no good. Let's do, see chalk finish doesn't last in these jars. So how it's all dried up. Clearly I need to go through these a little bit more often. No, I don't want to. Harbour. Harbour's fine, because I used it the other day. Right, Harbour. Still similar color to the um, Colonial, but a little bit different again. And we're going to go for our Lagoon. No, we're not because it's also... Oh my God, I'm on a roll. <laughs> it's a good start to the day, isn't it? Are you any good? There we go. All right. So we've got a Lagoon as well. So for brushes, um, use any brushes you like. I'm using the ones that I sell here in the studio and that I recommend. So I've got a 50 mil and then I've got a 38 mil. So... Very, very, very well used, very well loved. Um, I do like to use a slightly larger brush when I'm doing this sort of finishing. It's up to you, but I personally find a larger brush works quite well. So we're going to take our harbour first and we're quite literally just going to paint it on. So nothing fancy here at all to begin with. We're just getting it on. And when I'm doing this finish, I do like to do two coats. So the first coat sort of maps it out for me and then the second coat is when I take time to really get that blend and that finish exactly where I want. So I'm sort of just gonna bring them halfway up to three quarters up the legs. And these little sample pots, I'm glad that I've got them because I can use them up like this before they're no good. So they only dry out in these little jars as well. They do not dry out in the bigger jars. It's just because the jars are so small um, and like half the jars are already missing because I've been using it. So. so let's get that on there. So you're just painting it on. And then once you've got it on everywhere, then we come in with our second colour. So you don't have to worry about working overly quickly. It doesn't matter if it dries a bit. It's chalk paint. It reactivates quite easily. And don't worry if you miss bits either. So, and this is why I don't like chairs because they're fiddly, very, very, very fiddly to paint. The only thing I do make sure is that I don't have drips because I hate having drips anywhere that drips should not be. Unless I'm purposely going for a drippy finish, which I don't think I ever really have. Oh no, I've done it a couple of times, but not like over the top. Sorry, just like that. We're just getting it on all of our legs. I do want the harbour, the darkest colour, across all of the legs to begin with. I'll bring it up onto the seat a little bit, but not, it won't be super heavy. So. Nice 
and easy. This finish, literally anybody could do this. It is really quite simple. It's not overly time consuming and it's one of those finishes where you don't worry about the brush strokes. You don't worry about the texture because that just adds to it and it adds to it, having all those layers as well. So, I like to flip the chair upside down first because it just does, it makes it so much easier getting that first little bit on. So I'll upload this full video onto our YouTube as well. Um, and I'll probably end up linking it on my website as well. So when you're on my website, um, you will find on all of the listings, pretty much I've been working my way through all the products to make sure there's current and up to date videos on them. So you'll find links to heaps of the videos so that you can watch them right there as you're shopping and trying to work out what you want and what you don't. And of course, I'm always available as well. So if you do get stuck, you can give me a call and it's, I'm always happy to help. Or send me a Facebook message. If it's like out of work hours, I generally don't answer the phone just because I'm at home with the kids. Um, but I'll pretty much always answer a Facebook message or an Instagram message as well, so, or a comment as well. So you're always welcome to message. I don't know how to switch off, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't switch off at all. Even last night, like yesterday was my birthday. And um, last night I was still answering messages at midnight. So I'm just one of those people I can't switch off. So yeah, if you all, and, and blah, blah, blah. If you ever have any questions, you're more than welcome to send me a message or give me a call or an email if you prefer email as well. I do like messages and emails rather than phone calls, just because um, I can make sure it's written down for you, in front of you, so that you can sit there and like read through it yourself, um, instead of, um, yeah, just so it's in front of you, rather than, yeah, like having to write notes, and they're just easier sometimes. Not that one. Okay, I'm actually going to go in with Surf, I think, instead of the Lagoon. I feel like Surf's a better match for, I don't know, we're making this up, up as we go along. It may end up like crap and then I'll have to <laughs> redo it, but we're going to do this. I'm going to go in with Surf, which is this nice pale blue. It's not bright like the Capri, just to show you there. So that one's Capri and that's the Surf. So it's not quite as bright, but I feel like the Surf is going to go a little bit nicer with the um, Harbour. So we're gonna do this one instead. I'm gonna use the exact same brush. I'm not gonna wash it or anything. I'm too lazy for that. Um, but I just feel like this is gonna blend up nicer as well. I may still add some Lagoon, but We'll see. So to begin with, I'm just sort of going to bring it up and join it onto those legs. And having some on your brush as well can help that blending process. But for this coat, I literally just want it in place. I want to map out all my colors and get them into place. Once I'm finished as well, I actually paint the underside of the chair just to, I'll either paint it or I'll sand it. It depends how much paint I get on it. Um, but generally I paint it just to clean it up because I do get a lot of paint on it as I'm going. I don't tape around the bases of the legs at all. So it can just get a little bit messy sometimes. And I'm gonna do this one as well. So you can see how I'm just, I'm just putting it on the same as I did the harbour. I'm just matching it up to where the harbour ended. And this is why we do two coats with this. Like, I'm gonna have to do two coats anyway, because my harbour, actually neither of them have quite full coverage yet. So it's not, not a big deal if we do that. I'm actually gonna bring my harbour in and on this leg here at the front, I'm just going to bring the harbour all the way to the top because I wanna bring the harbour around the chair and onto the top of it. So it's got some of the 
surf on my brush that so has mixed it in, but that's fine. So that's our base. It's looking a bit ugly, but it gets prettier. So there we go. So that's what we've done so far. So now we flip it over. And I love doing the tops of chairs because you've got more area to work with. And this is when you really start to see it coming together that little bit more. Now I'm just going to get the tops of these runners. Runners, is that what they call? I don't know, that's what I call them. With the harbour. I've just grabbed my clean brush. I do like to have two brushes on the go when I'm doing this. Not always, but most of the time, I just find it that little bit easier. The handles, however, are way too long to get under there comfortably without making a mess. Just to get that bit, because I knew that I'd miss really, really big bits that would need to be touched up. Always do. Well, now our table's not in position. I will move you a little bit in a second so you can see what I'm doing. So we're going to bring our harbour up here onto our chair. Just a little bit. And the direction that you're painting in does not matter at all. Oh. I'm going to, sorry, I'm gonna move you up a little bit for a second. There we go, so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. I do have to keep an eye on the time, so always my longer than what I'm intending to. 9.30, right, half an hour. I never intend to go for as long as I do. So, just wanna get that on there. And then we come in with our surf. And we wanna bring it all the way around. Just like that. So chalk finish, Purico have two paint ranges. Chalk finish is our chalk paint. It, the biggest difference is that it has to be sealed. Okay, so the chalk finish is a beautifully pigmented water-based paint. Um, the, both ranges come in all the same colours, so there's the same colours across both, but the chalk finish has to be sealed. Really, really beautiful. You can use it for like a clean all over one colour modern finish, or you can do what I'm doing here. You can blend it, um, layer it, chip it, shabby chic it. You can do just about anything with it. So it's a really, really versatile paint. And then we have silk finish, which is our all in one mineral paint. It has a built in top coat which means um, that you do not have to seal. So that's the biggest difference between the two paints. It has a seven day cure time. And once it's cured, it is really, really durable. As long as you have got your prep work down, it's not gonna move. Um, it's really durable. I've got it in my own house on my dining chairs with no issues. It's a fantastic paint. It's our most popular paint. Um, and I can absolutely see why it produces a really, really nice finish, which I'm going to show you because I can tell you about the nice finish all day, but until I show you. So this is silk finish, this one. And this is chalk with a wax and with a top coat. The silk finish, if you want to change the shine, you can add a top coat to it. So this is the eggshell or it's now called the semi-gloss top coat. So you can add a top coat if you want to, or if you're looking for more durability again, but the finish of it by itself, can you see it catching the light? It's really soft. It's really, really beautiful. It self levels as well. Whereas the chalk paint won't self level. It does a little bit, but not like the silk. So the chalk finish, you will naturally end up with more brush strokes. It's part and parcel of the paint. It's just what it does. But um, try both. I really, really 
definitely recommend you try both. And um, I always recommend everyone try as many paint brands and, and as many different paints as you can um, because there's so many good ones out there and it is well worth finding your favourite because it took me a long time to find my favourite as well. Um, I talked to a customer yesterday and she's nervous about trying one of these because she's been using house paints and it is a big step to go from house paint to um, these properly formulated furniture paints. It is a big step and I remember the step myself. I started with house paints, it's all I could afford at the time. Um, and it's really daunting, but once you do, it's a massive difference. It's so much nicer to use. It goes on a lot easier as well. And it's designed for this purpose as well, which is nice, but well worth trying. So if you haven't tried it, it's a great opportunity to try it this weekend and to get your hands onto it. So I'm, I am open today. I'm open from 10 for my locals in Bendigo. And for everyone else, just on my website, the links all over my Facebook page and in the description of this live as well. So you can check it out. So it's 20% off this weekend because it's my birthday and I like to celebrate like every event. Those of you who have followed me for a while will have realized that by now that I literally celebrate every event. Um, so <laughs> next will be the store's birthday and then I don't know. I'm thinking about maybe just combining the store and the business's birthdays together. They're only like a month apart. So we might even do that. But I like to celebrate. I love celebrations. I love how they bring people together. I met so many new people yesterday, which was absolutely fantastic here in the studio. So yeah, it's just one of those things. I like to celebrate. I like I like sales. I love I love a good bargain, so I love I do love sales. <laughs> I love packing orders as well. I actually really enjoy it. So, and all your orders from me come with full product information as well. So I've got little sheets. I've got a folder full of sheets information um, that I give out to everyone, all about the products with my own hints and tips of how to use them to get the absolute best you can out of them as well. So I'm just carrying at the moment, carrying the surf and this is like painstakingly slow, I know, but we're just carrying that blue up and trying to get the bits that we missed as well because that's just, yeah, <laughs> it's a chair. <laughs> Probably not the greatest choice for a live, but we'll get there. And I might even, I've got room out the back. I might pop this out the back and let's do this chair the next couple of weeks. So I try to go live every Saturday. Um, and I don't know, does Saturdays work for you guys or would you prefer a Tuesday? Because I can do Tuesdays as well instead because Tuesdays, um, I do the school run and then come straight in. So I'm here early anyway, so I can do them Tuesday. So let me know in the comments if you prefer me to continue the lives on Saturday, um, where I know a lot of you are busy Saturdays, or if a Tuesday morning would be better, or if you're just gonna catch up afterwards. It probably doesn't matter too much to you. But let me know anyway, but I'm, I'm pretty flexible. So we do, if you are a local, I do run workshops as well. We don't do anything this intricate within the workshops, but they're a really good introduction to the product. So even if you've been painting for a while, they're a really good way to get hands on with the products and you get hands on with pretty much all of them and um, just get some knowledge behind you as well and have a go yourself. So you bring along a small piece they're a really fun way to just sort of test them out for yourself and gain some confidence in doing this yourself as well. Because I know a lot of you, it's, it can be daunting and I get it. I 100% get it. Anytime I do a piece that I haven't sort of done before or a style that I haven't done before, I can get quite nervous and I, I'm an R about it for a long time and 
I think that's human nature, isn't it? Okay, so now that I've brought my, I've still missed a bit, oh my God, spindles. So now that we've sort of gotten them all up there, as I said, it's quite warm in here. So our paint's drying quite quickly, which means that we can start our second coat straight away. If your paint's dry, keep going. You do not have to stop. Um, you obviously don't want to be going over paint if you're not quite dry because you're just going to start lifting those underneath layers. But if it is completely dry, you can do your second coat straight away. You absolutely do not have to wait. There's no wait time. Uh, dry time's anywhere from half an hour to four hours most of the time. But if it is warm like it is here today, it's going to dry really quickly, um, which is a nice little bonus. So let's do let's do the seat because I feel like you guys can see it a little bit better. Um, so we're going to I like to wet it first. And this is why I like these bottles, because it gives me a little bit more maneuverability with them. They're $14, $12, $14. They're on the website. They're the Mr. Bottles. So we're going to come in with our, what do we call it? Harbour. We're going to come in with our harbour. And by spraying it, we're activating that paint that's underneath. So this is the beauty of chalk paint too. It does reactivate really easily. Whereas the silk finish, it still does. And silk finish, you can still sort of achieve this finish with it, but it doesn't lend itself as well to it. But because chalk finish is one of those paints that's really, really easy to use, wetting it reactivates it, which is perfect for this finish because it's going to allow us to blend these colors together really, really beautifully. So, I sort of just start by going back over where I started. And I'm going to go over the very tops of these legs as well. Because I want these two front legs to sort of bleed up onto the chair. And just because we're bringing... Oh, I just missed the whole back of this chair. Just because we're bringing the surf all the way up the back of the chair... I like it to balance. I find if I just do surf all at the top, it kind of feels a bit heavy, like it does work, but I find for me, it just feels a bit heavy. Um, so top heavy with one color. And I find unless you've sort of got it all sort of even at the bottom with that, um, I'm just gonna tip it so I can get this top piece because my arms aren't reaching today. Um, and then I put my hand in it. Yeah, I find, yeah, unless you've got sort of it all blended at the same point on the legs and then you go up into the next colour, I feel like it just gets a bit, I don't know. It just feels a bit top heavy with one colour. I like to bring the bottom colour up when I do this. So I've done this a few times in the past as well and I always feel like it just needs to come up That little bit higher, right, that's better. And don't forget the underside of the top piece either, which I forgot on the pink chair until the day I was taking photos of it and I realized that I'd completely forgotten it. So then I had to pause and uh, do that before I could put it up for sale. So that was fun. I always miss something, every single piece, every single piece, there's always something that I haven't done every single piece without fail sometimes it's as simple as actually screwing the handles on properly other times it will I'll, I'll have missed a piece or with the paint or i haven't finished waxing a piece and i do it when it sells i always do it but i always miss a section i'm going to be a bit, bit a little bit impatient at the end <laughs> i just want to get it up so and i like to show my work too so i do get a little bit impatient sometimes Okay, so back to the seat, now that I fix that. So, wetting it again. We're gonna come in with our blue, with our light blue, with our surf. And like we'll do, 
I might even touch this up a third time just to really make sure that it's blended out as much as we want it to be. So, just like that. And the backs of this chair, the tops of these legs, I do want to be the light blue as well. I think I'm gonna add a transfer to this chair as well, or maybe a stencil for a change. I might even do a stencil as well. So I'll do a video on that maybe. Maybe that will be next week's live actually. Unless there's something else that you'd like to see, I think we'll do that. So sometimes as well, as you're doing this sort of thing, it's if you're finding it's just not quite working the way that you want it to, and I can already say it's not doing quite what I'm wanting it to do. In my head, I know exactly what I want it to look like, and it's not quite doing it. If you feel like it's just not working for you, step away from it and take a break. Um, some, like the last chair, I think I stepped away from it from like three or four days, but it's not uncommon common for me to step away from a piece for like a month or so. If it's just not working for you, it's just not working. Sometimes you need a moment to work out what you want to do. So, and that's okay when that happens as well. So all I'm doing is I'm just sort of working with the paint as it's there on the chair while it's wet. And I'm just going to bring in a little bit of the blue on both corners, so a little bit of fresh paint, and then work them up into the lighter blue. So you don't want it too wet, but you want it just enough that you can just blend it out. And that's literally all you're doing. So we're not looking great at the minute, but we will. And it's really, I like how stormy it's looking actually. And it's literally just a case of continuing to work it until you're happy with it. There we go. So I've just brought more of the blue up higher. And I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit onto that leg. So it's sort of mixing on your brush as you go. See how that blended out so much nicer there. And again, don't worry about your brush strokes. If you do find that they build up a bit too much and there's too many, you can lightly sand it between coats, you absolutely can. Um, and just knock those brush strokes back a little bit and help it all come together that little bit better. But can you see how this side is really come together more than this side? It doesn't look like a harsh line. We're just trying to avoid those really harsh lines. So, we come in again with our harbour, and we get it in spots that's not meant to be, so we gently brush over those. And we just keep working it. And I don't mind it as it starts to dry a little bit either. Sometimes it's nice and it gives you that little bit more movability. You can also spray your brush with your water as well. You don't have to spray the surface of your piece. And we're just going to keep doing that. So I'm just going to keep slowly working on this today and this week. And then next week we'll come back and we'll either do a stencil or a transfer, but I'm thinking a transfer. I've got some on the way, and I'm hoping there's one in there that I think might be the right sort of colors as well. So we might even see if we can bring them in a little bit. Yeah, see, I'm not liking this now, so I need to walk away. But this is where we're at. So I do like it, I like how it's come together. I'm not liking this line that I just put in it though, so let's come in with some so spraying your brush, really simple. So I'm no, 
I'm not an expert at blending. I don't do loads of it. I do a little bit, but not stacks and stacks. It's not all I do. Um, but I do like the finish that I can achieve with it as well. There we go. That's better. This is where we're at. So we're actually looking quite nice at the moment. I'm liking it. I don't hate it. I do like these two colors together actually. I'm glad that we went with the surf and not with the lagoon. Um, I feel like it works a little bit better with the harbour. I think the lagoon would have been the wrong choice and I would have really ended up hating it. But I don't mind this at all. So I'm just going to bring my... I want this corner to be a little bit darker and quite heavy. So I'm just going to bring... my harbour up there, just like that, just a little bit, alright so I'm going to leave that at that because I do have to go today, so that's part one, so look I've got the camera anyway, oh, let's turn the I've got the camera anyway, I might even set it up and as I touch it this week and keep working on it, I might just time lapse it so you can see it coming together. Um, and then, yeah, next week, we'll do next Saturday again. Touch wood, everything stays normal for a change for me. Um, we will do maybe a stencil and, actually there's a stencil there that I think would look quite pretty on the top. Maybe a stencil and a transfer. I don't know, we'll work it out. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Our birthday sale, or my birthday sale, continues until Sunday midnight, so tomorrow midnight. I am open today 10 till 1. Um, and if you have any questions, if you just want some more information about any of the products, um, please do not hesitate to ever reach out. I'm more than happy to help. You are never bothering me. Um, I'm one of those people. I love to help. Um, and I love to answer questions, so please don't hesitate to ever reach out. Um, I'm always here, I'm always available, and I never switch off, so even if it is the middle of the night, you will probably get a reply. Um, that's it from me. Have an absolute wonderful, what day is it? Saturday. <laughs> and um, yeah, stay safe out there. I know there's a lot of flooding happening up, up north, so I hope all of you are nice and safe if any of you are watching this. And um, yeah, have fun, guys.